Hello there, and welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 39, entitled Azure Blueprints. My name is Tim Warner. Our lesson today, as usual, comes from the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam AZ-900 Objective Domain. Today we begin with the functional group Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features, Pass Through Describe Azure Governance Features, our specific skill today is called Describe the Functionality and Usage of Azure Blueprints. On the right side of this slide, you can see a link, timw.info forward slash az900sg. Go there to download an interactive table of contents for this series. Let's get into it. Azure Blueprints is a core Azure governance strategy. If you look in the Azure documentation, Microsoft defines Blueprints as a method for us to group related resources and deploy them repeatedly, all at the same time maintaining compliance. Here's the situation. If you've been following this course sequentially, you know that there are many different resource types in Azure, and depending upon the size of your IT department and those who form your core Azure team, how do you make sure you're all on the same page? This is the core of Azure governance. Blueprints is a way to take the various parts and pieces in Azure governance and put them all into a single centralized context. The way that these blueprints work, and of course I'll do a demo as I normally do, but the workflow is that we create a blueprint draft. This is where we assemble the resources that will comprise the blueprint. We then publish the blueprint, and this gives us a version number so our teammates and I know exactly which version we're dealing with at any time. And then lastly, we can assign a blueprint once or repeatedly to the same or different environments. Blueprints have a really powerful locking feature, which can ensure that nobody, even subscription owners, can modify or delete Azure resources that are protected by an Azure Blueprint definition. An Azure Blueprint is made up of artifacts. You know, a blueprint in terms of traditional architecture gives you the plans for a structure or a building. An Azure Blueprint consists of one or more artifacts. These artifacts can be a resource group, which as you know by now forms the fundamental unit of deployment in Azure Resource Manager. The Azure Resource Manager JSON deployment template, again, every single deployment is always described in JSON. Role-based access control assignments, you know we've been there, done that, bought the proverbial t-shirt in the study guide so far. And Azure Policy. I feel really happy and satisfied that if you've been following the study guide, you should know all about each of those four artifact types. Now let's put this theory into practice, and I'll show you how to implement an Azure Blueprint. In this demonstration, I want to show you the basic practical elements of Azure Blueprints. If you want deeper information, then we're going to have to go beyond AZ-900. Again, I'm reminding myself to calibrate my instructional level here. In the Azure portal, I'll use the global search bar to look for blueprints. There we go. And if we head on over, we can see that Azure Blueprints is still in public preview as of this recording in July 2020. Now, just a side note, Microsoft Worldwide Learning, they're the folks who publish the Microsoft certification exams, have a stated policy to where they don't cover public preview features on their exams. However, they've made a decided exception for Azure Blueprints. Don't try to figure it out. I've done that many times and failed, so let's just continue. <laughs> we can see on the left-hand navigation bar, we've got blueprint definitions and blueprint assignments. Let's go to definitions, and I'm just going to go to create blueprint here. We start with a template, either a blank blueprint or we've got a whole bunch of really useful samples. Now, if you do plan to go beyond Azure Fundamentals, particularly if you're an Azure architect or administrator, I encourage you to click into these samples and take a look. We've got some that are aligned to the cloud adoption framework. That's Microsoft's own collection of proven practices with cloud deployment. And there's a number of other samples that align to different governance, regional governance, legislation, compliance, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm going to do here is just choose the basic networking, which is a template that deploys an Azure virtual network. Now, if you're not seeing the big picture yet, I don't blame you a bit. That should come into play very quickly. Let's make a quick case study here. Let's say that we're an Azure architect for our business, and let's say we're a managed service provider. And so we're going to be helping all sorts of customers around the world do their Azure deployments. And let's say we've put some time and effort into creating what we think is an ideal landing zone, as it's called, definition for a virtual network. So let's create, we'll call it a golden VNet. We can't have any spaces in these definitions. And we'll scope the definition in my subscription scope. 
So in other words, we can create a template that will deploy a virtual network with all of the best practices and elements that we feel need to be in it. And what's beautiful about these published definitions is that you can assign them n number of times, and because they're all fundamentally defined in JSON, they're portable to any other subscription or Azure AD tenant that you might be working with. Let's go to artifacts next. And remember that this is a already existing sample blueprint. If you were starting from scratch, there would be nothing on this screen. But what this one is doing is establishing a resource group. You have to do that. And when you select one of these artifacts, you come to the edit screen. And the display name is just the label for the artifact. Then we have the actual definition. And in this case, it looks like Microsoft in this template is going to generate a resource group name by combining the prefix that you provide as a parameter and then adding RG to the end of it. And notice that you can also override and say this value should be specified when the blueprint is assigned. Note that you can also add taxonomic tags at each level here. This is really important in the name of Azure Governance. This definition is going to include a network security group, which you know is a firewall to protect network traffic in a virtual network. And as you can see, you can import a JSON file that you've developed, let's say, on your own system. You're probably not going to edit in this editor window. It's a very uncomfortable environment that doesn't have code completion or debugging or anything like that. This particular template, it looks like, has a parameter here for the network prefix. And note again, you can either hard code the value in the definition, or you can say this value should be specified when you assign the blueprint. I'm going to do that in this case because let's assume that as a managed service provider, we're going to want to assign this blueprint to different customers, and they may have, they will have different naming requirements. We've got a definition for a virtual network with one subnet. Now, if we wanted to make it two subnets instead, what I would do is control A and copy this code out, pop it into VS Code, make my change, and then bring it back into this window. Again, it's kind of low tech. You can, in fact, keep your Blueprint JSON in source code control, but you'll have to use something like Azure PowerShell in order to work with Azure Blueprints. Unfortunately, the portal experience here is not optimized yet for DevOps practices, unfortunately. So looking at this as a whole, it looks like the Blueprint for the virtual network involves the resource group, the VNet with one subnet and a network security group. Let's go to add artifact. And there's a couple other artifact types you can add. We've got policy assignment, and this taps into Azure policy. And the idea here is you can add any policies or initiatives that you feel are important for this blueprint definition. For example, you might want to make sure that we automatically enable monitoring for this virtual network deployment in Azure Security Center. I'm going to select this initiative, this built-in initiative definition, and click Add. And let's go to Add Artifact one more time. And lastly, we can add role assignments. This is really cool. So let's say we want to, let's filter the list for network, and I'll choose Network Contributor. And again, this value should be specified, or we can hard code it. This would allow us, during Blueprint assignment, to specify who's going to be the manager of the virtual network. Let's save this as a draft, and now let's reselect our golden VNet draft and make it available for assignment. Again, we can edit or delete it, but let's publish it and give it a version number, make it 1.0, optionally add change notes, and publish. Once the blueprint has been published, we can then assign the blueprint. An assignment is just a deployment. I don't really like the wording there, but Microsoft never asked me. <laughs> I'll call this assignment test and I'll choose my home region, which is East US. The idea is as you publish additional versions of the Blueprint, you may want to publish a particular version with one client and another with another. We just have the 1.0 here. Now notice the locks, as I mentioned. We can either do do not delete or read only. Note that these locks are more powerful than the resource locks we learned about in our previous lesson. We could just say protect this deployment against deletion. And in so doing, we have to allow Azure to create a system assigned managed identity. Then the rest of it is going to be providing parameter values. I'm going to give the resource name prefix as test. And then let's see what else here. The resource group location, I'll specify that again. We've got our network contributor. Who's that going to be? In this deployment, I'll say my Melissa user will own this virtual network. 
for the policy, we've got a whole bunch of options. I'm going to leave all of those policy settings at their defaults. There is a lot of policy in that initiative. Wow. And then finally, we have our address space for the VNet and the subnet. And again, I can optionally change those, and then I click Assign. So what's happening now is that Azure Resource Manager is going to execute this deployment, and it's going to protect that deployment against deletion. And I hope you see the big picture of what's going on. Namely, Azure Blueprints enable you to define the full environment for your deployments. Let me go back to Blueprints here again so we can see what's going on. If we go to Assigned Blueprints, we can see we've got our test assignment that's in a waiting state because Azure is provisioning these resources now. This is where Microsoft wants us to go in the future for planning and doing all of your deployments. In other words, once this finishes deploying, if we wanted to add another subnet to the VNet, let's say, we would come in and modify the assignment. We would not go to the virtual network directly. We would use blueprints as a central command and control for managing our deployments. All right, we can see the provisioning status has now succeeded, so let's go to the resource groups blade, and we can see our test RG resource group that includes our NSG and our virtual network definition. Now, I'm a subscription owner, so you would expect that if I wanted to, for instance, to create an additional address range, I should be able to do so. And if I click Save and open notifications, that succeeded, yes. But if we go to Access Control IM and we look at Deny Assignments, when you put a lock in an Azure Blueprint definition, Azure creates a special Deny Assignment that affects all principles, including owners. So again, the idea for governance is that we really should be modifying this resource only in the Blueprint and not in the resource itself. And I can demonstrate that by coming over to a subnet and as a subscription owner attempting to delete it, let's confirm that change. And of course, I don't have access due to the lock. So that operation failed, as you can see up here. There it is, Azure Blueprints. For learning resources, first of all, the Azure Blueprint documentation at timw.info forward slash BLP1, a topic that's beyond our scope in Azure Fundamentals, but if you do plan to qualify as an Azure Administrator or Solution Architect, you should understand the possibilities for Azure Blueprints as code. This is where you and your teammates are at the least keeping your blueprint definitions in source code control and potentially even using a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline like Azure DevOps to work with Azure Blueprints. I've got a really nice link here, timw.info forward slash BLP2 that'll help you in that regard. And if you want even more info on Azure DevOps used in conjunction with Azure Blueprints, go to timw.info forward slash BLP3. I hope you got a lot out of this lesson. In the next episode, we'll look at the Microsoft Privacy Statement and the Cloud Adoption Framework. As usual, you can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my full-length Azure courses are in the Pluralsight library, timw.info forward slash ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying, thank you, and I'll see you in the next episode.